had the power to change me. Bulletin. Somebody say, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get it. That's what the Bible says. Then it says, and in all you're getting, get you some understanding. So here we, we understand right here at the onset of this particular passage that wisdom and understanding are separate. That you can have wisdom and not have understanding. How so? You can know what God's word says, but you don't really know how to apply it to your life. So God says, get the whole package. And I want to look at the NIV in your bulletin of that same scripture. Proverbs 4 and 7 says, the beginning of wisdom is this. Get it. The beginning of it is getting it. Then I like this, though it costs all you have, hear me now, get understanding. So let me tell you something, you cannot be cheap and be a champ at the same time. And a lot of people, I started to say most, but I won't say most, many people that I know want to be great, but they don't want to pay the price. They want to excel, but they have the spirit of laziness illuminating all over their life. It takes work not to be a jerk, amen somebody? It takes work to be great. It takes work to get your finances straight. Your excuses make you useless. Stop making excuses for being the way that you are. I had the privilege and the blessing yesterday to attend a men's ministry right here named In Command, led by Minister Antonio Watkins. And I tell you, so much of it blessed me. But one of the things that blessed me, and I won't call out any particular names, but, but one of the brothers said something that, that really showed me that he has great potential. It showed me that he has everything he needs to change his life. He said, and I won't call him out because we don't want to put him on front street, but he'll know I'm talking to him and not about him. He said, I, I want to make some changes, but I recognize I still got some boyish ways about myself. I still think in terms as a boy thinks. And I said to myself, sitting in my chair, I said, that gentleman has everything he needs to turn his life absolutely around. Now, most people wouldn't say that, but see, if you can recognize, good God Almighty, Part of the battle is getting people to recognize, but if you, can, if you can diagnose your own dilemma, come on somebody, you can be your own doctor, amen? And some of you just need to tell the truth and say, you know what, ain't no weapon formed against me can prosper. I'm the reason why I'm not successful. I'm the reason why I'm angry. I'm the reason why I'm bitter. Take ownership of your own destiny. The best way to dictate and to prophesy your future is not to let somebody else create it, but to create it yourself. I create my own future. How you create your own future? Daily, I decide I'm not going to let any weapon formed against me prosper. Now that tells me there are going to be some weapons formed against me. We're not talking about general weapons. We're talking about specific strategies deployed by the enemy and sometimes by your frenemies. There's some specific things going on around you that are strategically designed to bring you down and make sure you don't succeed. Some of you work in this, in the work environment. Some of you work on jobs where there is a system and a strategy to make sure you don't succeed. Everybody else can get promoted. Everybody else can get a raise. But there's something where you work that says we're not going to let you get ahead. You need to walk in there tomorrow and say, you ain't going to stop me from prospering. Your boss, and I hate the term boss, but I have to speak a language that you understand. Your boss does not control your destiny. Your boss does not control your promotions. Come on, somebody. Your boss does not determine whether or not you get a raise. Pastor, yes, my boss does. No, your boss doesn't. See, you waiting on somebody to save you. There is no Superman in the real world. And if you're waiting on somebody to save you, you're going to forever be a victim and you'll never be victorious. Somebody say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. The Bible says we ought to know some things. I don't know about you, but I know some things. What are we supposed to know, Pastor? The Bible says we know that all things, come on, Yana, all things work together for, for what? How many things? Bad things? Misfortunate things, painful things, unfair things, unexpected things, unwanted things. Then why are you tripping over anything that happens in your life if you know all things work together for your good? This is this changes your mind, your mindset. Why? Because I truly do believe, and I said this a few weeks ago, I'm going to keep saying it until I hear other people say it. Only good lies before me. 
only good lies before me. Well, Pastor, what if something bad happens? Then obviously it's God in disguise because only good lies before me. The worst has already happened to me and it's behind me. I wish I had somebody that could embrace that. See, you keep waiting on the bottom to fall out. I've already went through the worst parts of my life. That's why I'm excited about the rest of my life. I'm going to clap for myself. You don't have to clap. I'm going to clap for myself. Pastor, how you know you don't been through the worst parts of your life if you only knew what I've been through? Try to commit suicide three times. Have shot at people. Should be in prison right now. Should be serving a life sentence in prison as I speak to you. I'm going to tell on me. Amen, somebody. Not going to tell you what it was because the statute of limitations has not ran out on it. Amen. But I will tell you that I'm supposed to be locked up. When you see somebody passionate, and ain't many folk like me, so let's let me put myself in a different category. When you see somebody passionate about life and somebody that's persistent not to allow anything to defeat them, they've been through some stuff. You ain't gotta ask them, you just look at them and say, you know what, that, that, that sister been through some stuff. Cause you reach a place in your life where you don't care what people think. You reach a place in your life where you ain't gonna let nobody stop you from being what God has called you to be. You reach a place in your life that even if you ain't got no money, you know you can make it. Cause there've been times you didn't have no money and you made it. Good God Almighty. No, y'all, all y'all that were born, in a, born with a silver spoon in your mouth, you can't relate to this. But I thank God for my struggle. Now I hated the struggle when I was in it. I hated eating ketchup sandwiches. I hated it. I was embarrassed. I thought I was better than that. But you can think all you want if ketchup and bread is all you got. Ketchup and bread is what you got to eat. Shame when I lost my house. Foreclosed on. I've lost several cars. I've had my back stabbed by people who swore to God they loved me and would never harm me. I've been through all kind of stuff. And that I hated it the moment I was going through it. But as I look back over my life and I think things over, I can tell you I am truly blessed. Why? Because none of that could stop your boy from being here right now. If none of that could stop me, what else can the devil cook up? Nothing. You want to know why? Because I survived all of that not having the wisdom that I currently have now. If you survived the most horrific part of your life when you were in a state of stupidity, and now you will have accumulated and you're accumulating wisdom. You need to understand no weapon formed against you can prosper because if you can survive when you're stupid, you can definitely survive when you are intelligent and educated by the word of God. Am I preaching to anybody today? Hold your head up tomorrow. Hold your head up when it looks like you're losing. Hold your head up when don't nobody want to hang around you. Hold your head up when your finances are not working the way you want them to work because after a while you're going to know all things work together for your good. As long as you love God. And as long as you pick up the phone. Erica Badu said I can make you put your phone down. I want to know if God can make you pick the phone up. When you gonna answer the call? Cause God ringing, baby. And some of y'all think you're slick. You keep changing your number. I wish I had a church. You keep changing your number, trying to run away from God, trying to avoid God, trying to get away from the call of God. But if you got any sense, you'll recognize that even when you don't answer God's call, he stay right there with you, looking over you, caring for you. And even when you go through what you go through, God don't let it be as bad as it could. I just wanna tell him thank you today. Somebody say, I know that all things work together for my good because I'm going to love the Lord. I mean, I'm going to answer this call. Can I go deeper? Say the purpose of wisdom is to give me the better life. Here's the key to a better life. Change. I know you thought something going something deep. You thought it was going to be something to rock your world? No, the key to a better life is change. Now, what I'm going to say is profound, and if you're a little slow, you may not get it. But I'm going to slow it down because you have to get it. You can't change something you don't understand. Amen. It's okay. You, if you don't get anything else I say today, you have to grasp what I just said. You can't stand in a line and give somebody $20 and they pray over your life and you become amazing. You can't give the palm reader five dollars and they read your hand and tell you what's going to happen and expect for your life to be amazing. You have the power to change your own life. 
How so, Pastor? Well, you, first of all, you can't change something you don't understand. You want, want an example? Here are three examples. How many of you ever had to change a baby's diaper? Let's just get real grimy for a hot second. Okay, let's go back. You remember the first time, the very first time, the very first time you had to change a baby's diaper by yourself. You remember that? It's very traumatic. Amen, somebody? Now, number one, ain't so bad. But if that baby has done a double, and some babies do a triple on you, amen, somebody? And you open that diaper. Come on, I want to take you where you understand. You open that diaper, and, and there's an unpleasant surprise. First, it's the aroma that smacks you in your face. And I don't know about you, but I have often wondered for my three kids, how can something so small stink so bad? I wish I had a real church. Your booty ain't that but that big, but good God Almighty, your funk is this big, amen? And you look in that diaper and they got boo-boo all up here. Do I have a real church? Do I have a real church? I mean, they don't boo-boo all on their chairs, amen, somebody? And you be like, if I didn't love you, good God Almighty, you'll wear this for a while. And you have to figure out, okay, don't miss this. You have to figure out how to change. Don't miss this church. The diaper. The only way to change the diaper is you got to get an understanding. Understanding tells you, okay, you don't throw the baby away. The understanding is you don't put the baby in the front yard and rinse them off. Understanding is you don't, you don't let the baby sit in it for a long time. Understanding says, okay, I'm going to have to get down with this thing. I'm going to have to get me some baby wipes. Come on, somebody. Oh, don't nobody know about baby wipes? And I'm going to have to wipe this baby down. I have to understand I'm going to get some doodle on my hands. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I know some of y'all wear gloves. I didn't wear no gloves. I got doodle on my hands. I got to understand that this is going to be stinking for a minute. But through the understanding, I understand that the quicker I do it, the sooner it'll be over with. Here's another piece of understanding. And it don't matter how many times I clean that baby, I'm going to have to clean that baby again as long as that baby is a baby. I just said so many things. I don't know if y'all got half of them. Somebody say that's understanding. Here's another level of understanding. Anybody had to change a, a tire on your car? If you haven't, God bless you. You're an amazing person. You remember the first time, the very first time you had to change a tire by yourself? Some of y'all didn't know how to work the jack. Come on, somebody. Some of you didn't know how to get the, 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 the nuts off. Some of you struggled. But guess what? When you got understanding, you understood what to use. I'm preaching how to use it. And your understanding enabled you to change the car. Notice now when the baby needed changing, we didn't throw the baby away. We just fixed the problem. I'm preaching now. Notice that when the car had a tire that needed changing, we didn't throw the whole car away. We just changed the part that needed to be fixed. Some of you, here's a good news message for you today. Your whole life ain't as bad as you think it is. You just got a little part that needs to be fixed. You got a diaper that needs to be changed. You got a tire. I wish I had a church in here. Some of you have thrown away so much of your life because you didn't understand how to fix what was wrong with it. Trying to get you to think something different in your mind. You are the sum total of everything that you've thought in your entire life. If I can change your life, I can change your thoughts. Because I promise you, when I change your thoughts, I'm going to change your life. Yeah. What are you thinking about yourself that is toxic for yourself? Ain't nobody ever going to love me. I'm never going to have enough money. I always run out of money. This paycheck is not going to be enough. I hate my job. These are negative, toxic thoughts. And you think they don't hurt you, but they hurt you in ways you can't imagine. Yeah. I'm challenging you today to start thinking something different. So I got to think something different. Say, before I can have a new experience, I first have, have to have a new thought. Somebody will get it. I, I, I have to trust the Holy Spirit. Say, if I want a new experience, I got to start thinking new thoughts. But some of you got to stop, stop hanging around people who continue to regurgitate old thoughts. Somebody needs somebody in their life that's saying something. When's the last time you had a new thought? That's the question I wanted to ask you. When's the last time you had a new thought? Go to Somebody's got to be able to bridge the gap and help you understand that if I can think a new thought, I can have a new experience. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Somebody say, God wants me to be happy. Somebody preached the other way that God don't care nothing about you being happy. I said, that's blasphemy. God wants you to be happy. What kind of parent don't want his child to be happy? I want all my kids to be happy. God is a father first. He wants us to be happy. If God wants us to be happy, I promise you he'll help you. 
but he can't help you if your mind ain't open to happiness. That's why you got to learn how to recalibrate every bad experience and say, you know what? That will not define me. I keep preaching. If you went through a divorce, still believe in marriage. Help me somebody. Help me somebody. If you've been done wrong by people of the opposite race, still believe they're good people of the opposite race. You cannot allow your experiences to cause you to get stuck in a thinking pattern that's going to cause you to keep repeating something you don't want to experience.